Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 197, season eight. Today's date is February 7th, 2023, and welcome to the show. On today's show, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Jack Taylor. Um, this is my tribute to him. He passed away over the weekend. Uh, he was uh, 94 years old. He worked uh, on WGN TV Channel 9 Chicago for many years and uh, was on also on the radio. He also worked at other radio stations as well. So I'll talk about, my, uh, about his biography and my memories of watching him. Also, I will talk about snippets. Those were one-minute instructional shorts that were aired on TV, mostly on, on WFLD TV Channel 32. And they were aired uh, mostly in the 1970s. And I'll talk a little bit about those as well. Those were fun to watch. But right now, uh, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by O'Grady's Potato Chips. <laughs> Oh, I, when I saw this on Twitter, and I rem, and I completely forgot about them, and uh, that'd be a cool commercial to to have it in the program. So here's a commercial from 1984. This is the year they were introduced. So sit back and enjoy, and and listen to O'Grady's Potato Chips. Thank you. Fresh potatoes, but they're not potato chips until you slice them. You can slice them thin, or you can slice them thick. New O'Grady's potato chips are sliced thick, because thicker means more potato taste in each chip, with a deeper cut for a serious crunch. Look, if you want the real taste of more potato, you want a thicker potato chip. O'Grady's brand, the more potato, potato chip. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for O'Grady's Potato Chips. Uh, I remember this product very well. Uh, it was uh, on the market very brief, only for a few years in the 1980s. I did sample it <laughs> at that time. Uh, it, it was manufactured by the Frito-Lay company, and uh they were like the double crunch uh like it was like ruffles so it was extra thick and crunchy that's what it said on the regular one and the slogan was the more potato potato chip also came in the uh, other flavors uh the works so they had other i don't know what exactly what the works were i don't think i had that and also now a gratin, which is cheese. Oh, that sounds good. I don't remember. I don't think I had a cheese. And then it disappeared uh, around 1989, 1990. And never heard it, never heard from them again. It went bye bye. <laughs> so uh, if you love potato chips as much as I do, I try to stay away because of the salt, you know, because uh, high blood pressure. <laughs> You know, I the chips I eat now is Vintners, you know, Chicago made. But uh, now I heard, read somewhere they are manufactured elsewhere, which is terrible, and they're salt free. But they still taste good, they, you know, and no cholesterol, so they're good. They really are. So I try to avoid as much as I can when it's salty, because I like salty snacks like pretzels, Cheetos, etc., etc., etc. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I said I was going to talk about uh, Jack Taylor, the anchorman for WGN TV Channel Nine in Chicago. Also, snippets, uh, those instructional one-minute shorts that aired on WFLD TV Channel Nine Thirty Two in Chicago. So, uh, before I get started, uh, I'll mention one thing. Someone emailed me the other day and asked me, I love listening to your podcast. And in, in episodes 200, episode 200 is coming up. Do you, do you have something big planned for 200? And I said, oh, I haven't thought of it yet. 
I don't know. I might do some somebody or something about it. Something very that is true blue Chicago. Something like that. It could be uh, a department store, a TV personality, or an event. I don't know yet. Uh, that's I have about two more episodes before I reach that milestone at two hundred. We will see. So uh, give it some thought. That'd be kind of cool. And uh, we'll see about that. I've done the 50th. Uh, I think the 50th episode I did was Creature Features. I don't know about the 100. I don't remember. I've done so, You know, I've reached 197. I don't remember what most of the episodes I've recorded. <laughs> I have to go down the list to see. So uh, I will, I'll let you know on the next episode. <laughs> Of what uh, the 100th episode was. Okay, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, as for my health, everything's still the same. Uh, I'm still a little tired uh, for the new drug, uh, Xtandi. You know, that's for the uh, that spot on my rib. Uh, most of it, the fatigue is gone. Uh, I'm a little bit like that, but sometimes uh, I'm sweating a little bit. I have hot flashes. I had one big one this morning when I woke up. It was like, ooh, looked like I was running, <laughs> like that. But I'm okay, you know. So uh, it just comes and goes. Hopefully, it'll be gone. But the, I've only been on this medication now for about a month and a half. So I'll go see the urologist in April 18th. See how I'm doing. Take a blood test before the hand. See if the PSA goes down. I will see my regular doctor in March. Take a do some blood work. Oh, I hope it goes down. Please let it go down. I'm praying and praying and praying and praying. Okay. Right now, I'm going to talk about snippets first, and then I'll, then I will talk about Jack Taylor. Now, snippets, um, as I said, they were one-minute uh, long short films. Uh, they were for children. They were produced by the Kaiser Broadcasting Company. And that was uh, affiliated uh, with Channel 32, and there were other stations uh, in the country. I think Detroit or Boston, like that. I think Detroit is 50. Yeah, I think it was Channel 50, and there was Channel 44. I think that's Boston. I, I'm not sure. And there was syndicated across the uh, country, and uh, they were introduced in 1972. And they were shown uh, during the afternoon, like the afternoon lineup of the kids' program on, on that channel. Like, for example, there was a Speed Racer, McGilla Gorilla, uh, what else? Uh, sitcoms. Uh, let me try to think on the top of my head. There was Batman. They had the Batman Hour. Uh, there was there was the Monkees, uh, Partridge Family. Oh, the Brady Bunch. They had the Brady Bunch Hour. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, that lasts about 10 years, about from 72 to 1982. And during the first year that was on the air, the theme song for Snippets was the, the band called Hot Butter. And they were an instrumental band. And they used, a, they used their Moog synthesizer, one of the earliest of those. And... Uh, the song was popcorn so when you, i think a lot of people during the time during the 70s remember that song it hit in the billboard charts uh, very high it went dun, 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 dun 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 it went like that <laughs> and then um then they showed uh it's like the promo card, like the card showing snippets and plaid leathers, and a lot of. If you go on, if you go on the internet and do a Google search, you would see that. And uh, a lot of kids would say snippets like that, and then it was later changed to Five Green Worms. Uh, they were in the same in unison snippets that came later on. There were about a hundred. Uh, Snippets produce between like that. So uh, yeah, it ran for ten years. Uh, ran for ten years, but actually the uh, the new ones, the original ones, ran for about six years. 
and then and then they would uh, they were shown on other uh, other TV stations. So I don't know if Channel Nine show on WGN. I don't think so. Not that I know of. So I'm going to mention the most memorable the most shown so uh i have a list here so i'll go really uh, quickly and i'll tell you and i'll save the best for last okay so here we go uh there was one called buzzsaw and it teaches kids how to create a buzz like a buzzsaw toy a buzzsaw like toy using string and some light wood also now that was called it's a kid uh it shows a kid uh, doing his homework, and he's distra- and he's distracted. Um, and then the viewer asks, "Did you do your homework? Or, uh, did you do your homework yet?" I remember that one. <laughs> he was distracted by um, a glass of milk, a ball, the telephone, the television, the radio, anything like that. Next up, they were uh, three separate skits teaching the metric system. And uh, I remember that, you know, I learned that at uh, grade school. I, I, you know, I hate to admit it, but I forgot all about it. <laughs> also, there was Smile Gangs. It was a clip about some inner city neighborhood showing a bunch of kids and got got together with a bunch of kids. And they they had like a standoff briefly. And then they just made, uh, then they smiled to one another and then they became friends. That's nice. Another one was called Girls Can't Play Basketball. Uh, three boys were uh, shooting hoops and then joined by a girl. And one boy didn't want him to play. And, uh, you know, he didn't give her a chance, but he gave in and then he allowed her to play. Well, that's fine. Also, there was like an animated, like a claymation uh, person or thing. Uh, he was, a, it was a green gr- man, kind of mean looking. And it was called Bad For You. And he was sitting there eating candy, cakes, chips, all kinds of junk food. That was not good for you. And he kept, and he got fatter and fatter. And then he got, and then he, and then he, uh, then he melted away, but he was still in denial because he said these were good for you. these were good for me. It's not true. <laughs> and the the other one was called Good for You Foods. I I'm sorry, Good for You Foods. It's another shit, another skit uh, showing uh, eating the proper foods like meat, fr- uh, fish, fruits, veggies, and. Uh, Others showed like the bad ones, like soda pop, candy, snack, you know, potato chips, uh, probably snack cakes, all that. And the boy says, uh, next time you eat, eat to, eat to win. Oh, so it's kind of nice like that. Let's see. Also, there was uh, the new kid in the neighborhood. That's about this uh, Asian kid. You know, he felt uh, a little nervous. He didn't, uh, he wanted to play. He saw some kids playing uh, ball, but he wanted to join them. And so one kid felt sorry for him and asked him to play. And then he became friends. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I know that feeling. It's happened to me many times when I was young. Also, there was take turns and share. Yeah, that's with a uh, slide. Also, skateboard safety rules. Uh, George Washington Carver. That's about uh, that man. Also, make friends, don't fight. And also a smile to brighten someone's day. Also, nobody to tell nobody told me to wash my hands. And uh, acorn whistle. Also, uh, homework first. Uh, books make good friends too. And then there was the fireman. I remember this one. I like that. Also, there was school uh, principal. Also, uh, mom says brush your teeth. And uh, what will I be when I grow up? And many, many, many more, you know. So if you'd like to watch them, uh, please do. They're on YouTube. You know, just type in in the search engine for snippets. And I saved the last part last. And it's called Come Back Here. And this was what, this one was the most memorable one of them all, which is a coffee can. And uh, 
I'm right now I'm going to play it so you can listen in. And this is courtesy of the Museum of Classic uh, Chicago Television, uh, fuzzymemories.tv by Kirk Klein. Thank you very much. And this is from 1981. So here is the snippets short comeback here. So sit back and enjoy. Thank you, everyone. If you can roll a can away, can you make it come back? Come back here. You can if it's a comeback here, and you can make one of your own. Get a large coffee can with both ends cut out and two of these plastic lids. You'll probably want to paint them as we did. You'll also need a large rubber band, some heavy washers or a lead weight, some string, and two one-inch squares of heavy cardboard. First, tie the weight to one side of the rubber band. Next, make a one-inch cut exactly through the center of each plastic lid. Now, slip one end of the rubber band through the cut in one lid and secure it with one of the cardboard squares. Do the same with the other lid. Push one lid into the can and put the other lid on it. Then reach through and pull the first lid out and put it on the other end of the can. Make sure the weight is in the middle of the can as shown here. And with that, you've just made your own Come Back Here. Snippets are produced by Field Communications. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the uh, that short from Snippets. Uh, come back here, you know, with the can. That uh, I tried, uh, you know what? I tried doing it, but uh, failed. <laughs> Just I'm not very, you know, I'm not very artsy crafty person. <laughs> You know, I do my best, you know. Uh, when it comes to art class, I can't even, you know, I remember a line from the Lucy show where uh, uh, Lucille Ball said, you know, her character Lucy Carmichael said, I can't even draw a straight line. And then uh, Vivian Vance, her character Viv said, I can't even draw a crooked line. <laughs> that was me. That was, so, uh, so snippets are, are still memorable. To this day, uh, when I posted the photo on Van Chicagoland Facebook page, a lot of people remembered it, and uh, a lot of people forgotten about it. But we don't have—I uh, don't think we have instructional video uh, shorts like that anymore. There, there were others like that, and uh, I remember two that aired on Channel Thirty Two as well. The one was called "The Most Important Person in the Whole Wide World." I don't know if people remember that. I'll do a podcast episode of that. And also, well, of course, could be in the kingdom of could be you. I could do that too. So maybe I'll do both of those in one one episode. That'd be kind of fun. We've got to do some research. Okay. Right now I'm going to talk about Jack Taylor. Uh, when I heard about his death over the weekend, I was very saddened because I grew up watching with him. And so did everyone else uh, in Chicago. He was, uh, he was a classic and uh, a true gentleman. And, uh, you know, he was just a part of our lives like that. I'm so sad about that. So I'll talk about my memory memories of him. And uh, I will talk about his biography. I'll do the best I can. Uh, I will not leave out Nightbeat because that's important. <laughs> so let's see. So here we go. Uh, let's see. And, uh, so he spent, uh, uh Jack Taylor spent uh, about almost 70 years on TV and radio. Okay. So, and this is based on his obituary that was printed, uh, yesterday. And, uh, he was born not in Chicago, in South Dakota. It was a town called Redfield on a small farm yeah. on December 7, 1928. And, uh, you know, that was during, and then the depression came and well, that was tough. And so he wanted to, uh, he wanted to escape from that and he wanted to join the military and he did that. And, uh, and he got an assignment and he worked and he was, he enlisted in the army at Fort Knox, Kentucky. And then, um, a lot of people notice his voice. He had a good uh, speaking voice, and then the uh, he got worked at the Armed Forces Radio, and I think at the first radio station he worked was at uh, WN 
OXAM, of course. <laughs> it was the Armed Forces Radio, Fort Knox, Kentucky. We keep all the gold and all the nice stuff. And uh, became the staff announcer, and he loved uh, his, his music of jazz. He loved then. Then he continued in Kentucky. He worked at a radio station, W-I-N-N-N, A-M. That's two ends in Louisville. And uh, that's where he met his wife, Virginia. And then uh, as time went on, uh, he auditioned for a job at WCFL in Chicago, uh, Super CFL. Remember that? And he was 20 years old, and he got it. I guess uh, he passed the audition with flying colors. <laughs> and then, uh, so I don't know when he exactly... Uh, when he got the job, probably 59 or 60 or something like that. And then, then uh, well, I, I could be wrong. No, like about uh, very early in the 50s. I don't know when WCFL started exactly. Uh, forgive me. Then he moved to WBBM AM, uh, probably seven, uh, 780, yes, and on Chicago, of course. And then, uh, then he moved to WGN TV. He was uh, on the radio for a long, long, long time. And he and he was a news anchor. Uh, he was a host of a show. He was an announcer. He probably did uh, commercial spots. I, I imagine he did. Uh, and then uh, he moved over to television in the '60s. And uh, let's see, he he hosted a show around 1964 called real life stories and it aired on 1130 in the morning monday through friday on channel 9 1130 right after girl talk <laughs> with virginia graham uh, i don't remember he did that no and uh as for the news he didn't um he didn't do the news every day i think he did the, on the weekends i i i believe he did and also he had a radio show uh, his own. He hosted with a woman named Virginia Gale. They were there for quite a while. And uh, let's see. So, and then he became the anchor man of, uh, on WGN newscasts, I think at five o'clock and at 10 o'clock. And he was there for almost 10 years. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the lineup consisted of uh, Harry Volkman doing the weather, Jack Brickhouse doing the sports. Also, uh, there was uh, also did this, uh, there was Wendell Smith, if, you, if that name rings a bell. Uh, there was, uh, I forget who the other guy is. Uh, I'll get to him in a minute. Uh, there was... Uh, there was Wendell Smith, and there was uh, Floyd Brown, who just passed away recently. Oh yeah, that was that was bad, <laughs> you know. So he lived a he lived a long life too, he really did. And uh, let's see. So uh, and also who was on the show on the news pr program was <clears throat> uh, Len O'Connor. <laughs> Oh, that man was something else. He, he, either you liked him or you didn't like him. Uh, my mother made fun of him all the time because she didn't understand a word he said because <laughs> he mumbled. I understood him when he was on TV, but she didn't. And, that, and at the end of his comment, he did the commentaries on the news all the time, you know, and I am Len O'Connor. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I can't think of the other guy. Um, I'll get. Uh, I'll think of some. I'll think of it in a moment. Anyway, um, so he was very popular. Uh, very. Um, that is, Jack Taylor was very popular with viewers, and like me, and I look forward to watching him. You know, he was a great voice. You know, he felt uh, you felt comfortable watching him as well, and. Uh, after 1979, uh, John Drury joined WGN. And uh, then Jack Taylor went to uh, Nightbeat. Now, Nightbeat, 
I don't know when exactly that started. I think Carl Grayson, if you remember him, he was the original voice of Creature Features, and then it was Marty McNeely after that. Uh, maybe, but a lot of people remember Night Bee from the late 70s and, and the, during the 80s. And uh, the, the ones that, ho- the, that did the uh, Ink of the News were uh, Marty McNeely, Jack Taylor, also Floyd Brown did that. Okay, and uh, also um, I forgot one, one more person that Jack Taylor uh, co-anchored with was Larry Roderick. As far as I know, he's still alive. But uh, last I heard, he moved to Colorado, retired there. I think he's still alive. Um, I'll double check. So, so Night Bee was mostly where I watched Jack Taylor the most time. Uh, because uh, when he started, I was in high school. Then I went to college, uh, daily college, for a couple of years. Then I went to DeVry Institute of Technology, where I stayed up late most of the time and watched Night Beat. When I was studying for my exams or doing my homework, you know, cramming all that stuff, oh, that was rough, you know. I I watched either Johnny Carson or David Letterman, Actually, I watched David Letterman, and then because uh, he was on eleven thirty, and then uh, about twelve thirty it ended. Uh, usually, night beat aired. It started air maybe about after midnight or twelve thirty or one o'clock. Either of those times, whenever the ten thirty movie was on, yeah, like that. So right now, I'm going to play a uh, portion of Night Beat. Uh, courtesy of, let's see, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that, of the Museum of Classic Chicago Television, Fuzzy TV by Rick Klein again. So this is just the introduction. So you would hear the familiar theme song uh, of Nightbeat. Uh, I Someone posted, they want, to know, they want to know, what was that uh, theme song? What was the name of that? And uh, they did find the name, but if you, you have to go on YouTube and search it, because I don't know what it was. Okay, so, uh, so right now I'm going to play the introduction of, uh, this is the opening minutes, minutes of Nightbeat. And this is from August 1st, 1980. This lasts about a minute and a half with Jack Taylor. So sit back and enjoy your one. Thank you. WGN Television, Chicago. Tanker truck carrying highly volatile liquid propane gas overturned on the Tri-State Expressway near East Hazelcrest Thursday night. The tanker sprung a leak in the accident and resulted in the evacuation of nearly 600 area residents and the closing of the expressway until further notice. Firemen are keeping constant streams of cold water spraying on the tanker to reduce the temperature of the propane and to lessen the chances of an explosion. Liquid propane turns into gas as soon as it hits the air, thus negating the effectiveness of washing down the area. Empty tanker trucks are on their way from Michigan to assist in the pumping of the chemical from the overturned truck. State police say the Tri-State Expressway will be closed for at least several hours until the propane has been cleared from the area. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the opening minutes of Nightbeat. Jack Taylor. I found out who uh, I found out who was the person that was. A, he was on the tip of my tongue, and I couldn't think of his name. It was Rick Talley. Uh, he did the sports uh, on WGN TV Channel Nine. Also, there was a weatherman named Jerry Peterson. He sounds familiar. Um, I don't know. I know. I think Rick Talley passed away. I don't know about Jerry Peterson. I haven't done a research about him. Uh, after I'm done with the program, I'll 
do a re, uh, do an online search on him as well. So Nightbeat, I don't know when exactly it ended. Probably about eh, mid '80s, late '80s. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly. I was going to do a podcast episode about that show, you know, Nightbeat itself. You know, get a, get some research on that and talk about my memories. But now I just did <laughs> with Jack Taylor. Okay, and let's see what else. Also, uh, Jack Taylor was best known as a financial news anchor and interviewer for many years from that show, The Stock Market Observer. If you remember, on this was on the U. Well, it wasn't called the U. It was called it was WCIU TV Channel Twenty Six. They showed this in the morning. And uh, you, I remember all the numbers and the letters on the bottom of the screen, you know, that uh, like that. What was it? And he hosted that for many years, many, many, many years. So he was well known for that. Uh, he was still on WGN Radio, and then um, something happened, uh, and then he quit. And then after, uh, uh, I think uh, when they got rid of the Stock Market Observer, he moved over to WFN-TV, and it was a 24-hour financial news network. I don't know much about that information. Or, uh, I don't know if that was Channel 26 or it was another – no, not Channel 26. I meant 66 or Channel 60. Uh, I got to look into that. And then he returned to radio, but not uh, at, at FM 100. You know, W L O O, I can't say that. W L O O F M. You know, with the beautiful music. <laughs> I remember those commercials. So, and he had a, a, his radio show there as well. So he was there for quite a while, but most of t- most of his time that he spent was on the radio, and he had his own show. It was uh, called the Jack Taylor Show, and this was on t- WKRS. Uh, 1220 in Waukegan. He did that. Uh, I think his wife was on the show as well. They, they co-hosted it together. And then uh, he was on WDCB uh, 90.9, 90.9 and he was at that Midwest Ballroom. And he did a two-minute co- commentary on that. And uh, that ended, uh, it was on the air for a long time. And then it ended, I think, like last year. Or a year before, around there. So, uh, so that was uh, that's a shame. So I guess he just worked up almost at the end. He really did. So that's great, like that. And uh, he had hobbies. Uh, he did like he loved because he lived on a farm. So he did he had, he had horses and he had the antique cars. So he lived in Wheaton, Illinois, for a while. And because back then when Wheaton wasn't built up, that was like in the 50s and 60s, that was like open air, open land, no, nobody, nothing around. That must have been beautiful like that. He enjoyed that. So, yeah, like I said, he passed away over the weekend uh, at the age of 94. So that was sad. It really was. And uh, we'll all miss him. We really will. Because he was uh, part of Chicago history. And as for me, he was. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure people will have tributes. I saw, oh, on Facebook and Twitter, some people uh, commented on the post that I was I was going to do a podcast episode, and they remember watching him, and they they were and they loved you know they loved watching him. He was like a nice guy. Very, you're you're so comfortable to watch, and especially on Facebook, like that. So yeah, I found a picture of I found a photo that was autographed, and it was Jack Taylor. He looked very handsome, and uh, that was that was nice. It really was, like that. Okay, so that'll be all for today. Uh, on today's episode, I discussed uh, my tribute to WGN TV Channel Nine. Uh, and Chica- uh, anchorman Jack Taylor. Also, I talk about the instruction, the uh, one-minute uh, instructional short snippets. So, uh, it was 
probably a long program. <laughs> Not very long, about 35 minutes, so that's okay. Uh, next podcast episode probably come up, coming up this weekend. I don't know what I'll talk about. We shall see. Uh, it's very, you know, maybe I'm running out of subjects, but uh, I don't think so. Something will come up then. You know, if you have any suggestions, uh, please email me or make comments on my Facebook page uh, on, you know, Vanish Chicagoland on Facebook. Also uh, on my blog, VanishChicagoland.blog, you could do that. Or on Twitter. I have a lot of Twitter. For, my, follow, my followers are growing all of a sudden. It's like they're blooming like that. And uh, if you want to tweet something, you know, and make a suggestion, you know, I'll look into it. I will do that. Once this podcast is published, uh, it'll be available where podcasts are. Like, for example, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, also Breaker, Overcast. Uh, it'll also be on my YouTube channel, Chicagoland.blog. Please subscribe. And uh, you can also subscribe on the on my apps as well. Also be posted on social media, Facebook and Twitter. And, uh, and just listen if you have the time. You can listen to, you can use your desktop, your, like my new one, like my, I have my new iMac. Uh, also your, your Android phone, your iPhone, your tablet. Uh, what else? Anywhere, wherever podcasts are available. Okay, so this is because I was your host of Vanishing Gauntland Stories. Thank you for joining me. Uh, so it's bye bye for me, and here's a little traveling music from Ray Rayner saying bye bye bye. Take care, everyone. So long. We have to go. Bye bye bye. <laughs>